What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Pixel Logic live stream. More specifically, a Zebra Central image breakdown. Happy to have you guys here because I'm joined by a very special guest, Manuel Jordan. Say hi, Manuel. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm busy, but in a very good way, you know? Yeah, busy is good. Busy is good. Busy's so. Good. So if some of you don't know, what we do um, every Tuesday is we either do like an image breakdown or an industry spotlight. So we have a lot of really cool spots where we bring on artists and kind of talk to them about how they created something or how their industry works. So feel free to ask your questions. Feel free to jump in and just, you know, comment your thoughts. And if you would like to know how Manuel did something very specifically, then feel free, again, ask those questions. I'll be gathering those questions up as he goes through this. Um, before we get into that real quick, let me just uh, showcase right now. Uh, coming up soon on, well, let's see, that's uh, June 7th, we have a industry spotlight that will be showing up and uh with marlon nunez and then we also have on june 8th we have a make with us little miniature how it's made featuring me so i'll be going through and making little tabletops like this well here so if that's stuff that interests you feel free to jump on and join us as we go through it so without any further ado we're gonna go ahead and have marlon uh have manuel talk about himself introduce himself officially so how are you? Who are you? What do you <laughs> tell us about yourself? I'm a human. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm Manuel. I'm from Peru. I'm twenty. I'm, I'm twenty eight years. Uh, I'm start in Suraj. I think in the beginning of yeah yeah in the beginning of the of all this pandemic in the quarantine. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm most like uh, a creator, character artist, like a three concept, something like this. And yeah, and I'm here for anything that maybe you guys can ask me. I'm here for anything. Nice, nice. Well, let's let's go ahead and bring up the piece that we're talking about today. Um, so. What was this piece for specifically? Yeah, this is for the Grassetti's contest last year, in December. Nice. Uh, the theme was Underworld, you know, the Underworld. And you have all the freedom to, to create your own concept because that's one of, of the rules that you need to, to create your own concept but the thing is underworld. So I, I think about from a character, you know, an archbishop, archbishop mm -hmm. from the underworld. And yeah, and this won the first place in the contest. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy for that. Congratulations. No, it's, it's a beautiful piece. There's a lot of layers and a lot of depth. If anybody would like to go uh, a little bit deeper into it, um, feel free to uh, check out his art station because he um, also talks about the piece a little bit more in depth. So feel free to definitely check that out. Um, but the detail here is fantastic. I mean, zooming in and seeing those faces and those okay. skulls, could you talk about that? Like, what was the inspiration um, about that? Yeah, well... Uh, it's curious because the idea to put the the, the little faces here mm. was from my my fiance. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, she she always have the the best ideas for my projects. So yeah, yeah. But I here is like yeah, it's very very no. Let me see. Okay, yeah, like 20 million polygons is very, very high. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, I was using a, a little tip that mm -hmm. I, I see in, in Agrosetti's uh, channel, YouTube channel, that because uh, maybe I, I, from some people that doesn't have a very strong 
PC mm -hmm. that uh, maybe they can get, you know, too much polygons in the sculpture. So yeah. one tip that I see is using the masking uh, by cavity, you know, mm -hmm. and exaggerate the the um, the details. Oh right? yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> because yeah, let's okay make example masking. And also too, like you know, uh, for, especially for those who may not have a super powerful computer, if you turn on solo with uh, you know uh, dynamic yeah. set on, it, it'll make sure that it's not going to overload <laughs> too fast. So solo is a solo is a very popular button for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I put this mace uh, mask a cavity. I mm -hmm. turn off the mask. Le then go to deformation, in flat, and you know play around with this. Maybe one. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, this a uh, very very you know <laughs> exaggerate. <laughs> so, yeah. point two, point two. Yeah, it's amazing. Once you mask that that off, yeah. You see, of course, this is already exaggerate, you know. Mm -hmm. But this is in the case maybe you can get more subdivision level. And yeah, 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 yeah. But all all these uh, details is by hand, made by hand, you know. And of course, uh, for example, I have this, okay? Mm -hmm. And I really like this texture. So I use the extractor. Yeah, the extractor brush. Just oh, yeah. extract this and maybe you know put in the songs that i want to that's is a very quick example yeah, yeah exactly now, yeah so for, so just to, just to kind of for the chat too um the extractor brush basically it's creating an alpha on the fly for you to yeah. reuse so anything that you've done you know with it you, you want to capture that detail just use that extractor brush and then you yeah. can repurpose that everywhere yeah. that you want. So it's a really great way to create alphas very quickly and not have to redo everything. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a lot, <laughs> a lot of time. Yeah. 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 The way that I'm, I make this is because I'm from traditional background. I was a traditional sculpture, you know, and mm -hmm. then, for me, it's more easy and more, you know, more intuitive uh, process. Just using the Dynamesh mm -hmm. and just sculpt, and then make a series measure and uh, dupli duplicate the mesh, make a, a project, a project, and then a projection, and then refine the details in the subdivide uh, mesh you know yeah no it it's it's so amazing so so to to kind of like go back a little bit in time how did you block this out what did the what was the beginning stage like especially for something like you know rafael Grossetti's contest where it's like you're creating your own character your own piece and you know, I, I personally have struggled <laughs> with creating something on the fly that I feel like would work in something like that. So, and what was your blockout process like, and your thought process in piecing this character together? Okay, I always start with a sphere, you know, from may, maybe from a work and production. I may, maybe I use. Uh, C2, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mesh, but in the case that I made uh, something from scratch, I always uh, like to use a uh, sphere because I'm, I have more freedom to 
explore the silhouette, the form, um, to look in some different in mm -hmm. the very, you know, in the very beginning. I have, let's, okay. because I, this is like the very uh, sketch, mm -hmm. maybe one hour, maybe one, two hours. Oh, wow. And just play around with the, with the move and clay build up and dynamic. That's all. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, and looking the, for, from this, I have, you know, symmetry. I always start with symmetry, and then, in the final steps, I, I like to, you know, break the symmetry to, for more organic, look, you know, because yeah. if you have something like it's very very old, or like a monster or a creature, you have to need. A, a symmetry you yeah. have to break the symmetry so yeah i i begin from this yes play around from the silhouette this right here the maybe you can see in this in the square uh, yeah. is very useful to because you can see the silhouette and yeah. that because sometimes in the sculpture you have okay you have the character or you have the sketch right in your mm -hmm. in your face yeah. but you can see very well the silhouette you know sometimes so this tool is very useful for that because that is very very important the yeah, it's kind of the, kind of yeah. the life of the character a little bit you know the silhouette really helps you see all those shapes because I feel like, especially something like this, you you were already in like you know, let's say hour, two hour, you know. At this point, you started carving in some really good detail, but a detail, especially if if for a newer artist, tends to want to gravitate towards detailing more and more. But that silhouette, that's a really good tool to have on your corner because it's yeah. going to help identify what the shapes are. Are they working? Are they not? Because if you have really strong detail, but you're lacking in silhouette, you're absolutely right. It's just not going to work out as well. So that silhouette helps tell the story a bit. And even from afar, like even though your silhouette's tiny on the screen right now, mm -hmm. you can see how powerful that really is to lock that in. So, yeah. Because I, I, I can do more big, you know? Yeah. And I, I in like in the first, in the first hour, I schooled only with the silhouette. Mm -hmm. only with the silhouette looking you know the the shapes yeah yeah then of course with more days i here is more of course it's more detailed you know but i'm still i'm still looking the silhouette okay because i i see the silhouette here and uh, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's interesting, it's good, but I think it's missing something, you know. And then I put the the arms from the the final version. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Let's see it. It's yeah, nice. because it's and the you know the this stuff too in the hand make. Yeah the silhouette a lot more interesting. If again, the silhouette works, mm -hmm. the model works. Yeah. Doesn't matter that you have a great sculpture, great detail, if you silhouette doesn't work, you know? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And this, uh, for those who are joining, um, this was all done, this was all done by hand. I mean, this. ZBrush, but it was just all hand work, you know, no, yeah. no quick buttons, <laughs> no shortcuts. No. Just, and how long did it take you officially? I know that the contest you said ran about a month. Like a month. Like uh, one how, month. how long would you say you, you uh, put invested per time? Day? Per day? Yeah, like, total. Per day, like two hours. Yeah. 
like mm. two hours per day. That's awesome. Because the, um, I think for me, the most difficult part is find the idea, you know, the concept of the culture to mm. make something just cool to do, to go for like a very good idea or, or something that tells you a, a story. I think that is the most difficult part mm -hmm. and the most, you know, enjoyable part. Absolutely. No, it looks really cool. So, so if we could dive in a little bit uh, deeper into the staff work, what was the thought process behind creating the staff? Because it's really neat the way, not only does it have all the, the skulls and some filigree, but the way the relationship on the top part of it, how it kind of curls up and into itself. Um, it's, it feels really just, what's the word I'm looking for? More like, yeah, like it's super powerful. It's, you know, as a staff, there's like, there's a lot happening, even though it feels like a simple shape. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 I think it's because, okay. You have to, to think in, What's, what is your, you know, your key shot or your key, you know, that the part, the most important part in the, in the sculpture right here is the head, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I want to, you know, to, to have this stuff, but I don't need that because, okay, it's look very detailed, mm -hmm. but actually it's, it's not, it's not yeah. so much detail. It's very rough, detail, yeah. you know, it's not too much clean because I don't want the, you know, the focus is mm -hmm. in the stuff. I want the focus in the head, but uh, from the form on, on of the stuff i i use reference you know for the for the form mm -hmm. but at the same time i want to re to to bring like a a flow a really smooth flow in the stuff yeah um the this kind of spiral of of little circle right here is very, you know, like, uh, it's not too aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, because I want, at the same time, I want this contrast from a very grotesque look and also have, uh, like, not too aggressive stuff. Yeah. You know. No, yeah. No, you, it's, it's really... yes. Uh, using slash three, mm -hmm. a little of this place right here. And yes, using uh, alphas to to do the textures and use a couple of skulls and just make a like a brush and clone mm -hmm. here. And this is it's very, it's not very difficult, actually. It's very, very, like, yeah. easy. Nice. All right. And so for for uh, his, Rafael uh, Grissetti's contest, um, it was, uh, you had to present a, uh, an illustration render. Is, is that correct? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, I, I can open the art station to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And again, for those of you who are joining, we are doing an image breakdown. Uh, Manuel Jordan here, he won Rafael Grissetti's uh, contest and this is the image that he submitted. And so we're going through this image together and he's talking about the, how he created it, but also to his inspirations 
and overall design flow. So if you have any questions as we move forward, please feel free to jot your questions down and we'll ask them and have them answered. We laid this render. This was really cool. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I made the, um, the textures in Substance Painter mm -hmm. and then go to the Arnold for for the for the render the final render and then i do like a a little you know retouch in photoshop that works yeah wow no that was really cool this that subsurface scatter coming through is clean and the, just feeling like this head and the way the the red and the gray tones how they work with each other and really bring bring to just bring this character to life um it's yeah, you, you've you've achieved it. It's super gross and super awesome all, all at the same time. Same, same. Yeah. yeah, it was very, very difficult, you know, yeah. because um, the thing is, and maybe sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, saturate too much the sculptures with the details, but in this case, I think it works very well you know yeah I, I agree because you know the thing is is that the important part with with detailing anything is that no detail should really be lost you know if you overwork it even from afar as you're showing the shot here you know we can we can see what is happening in every every section of this character's you know body and there's no nothing gets lost and when you zoom in it, it's like the picture gets even bigger and you can see more of what's happening. And so I think, yeah, like you said, you, you've, you really nailed the ability to have that language coming through and the detail shines on its own without overwhelming the entire image. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because the, the thing is tell a story, you know, mm -hmm. and not distract with a lot of details. But in this case, I think it uh, works very, very well. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for for your words, man. Yeah. So, so I have a question that I want to ask because it's I've been I've been dying to ask it. The chains. How did you how did you do the chains? Was that all hand placed? Did you make just one link, or did you do do some some fancy stuff? <laughs> okay. Uh, for example, I let's. Do or do okay for the change chains and all of ornamental things. I'm I'm doing. I I, I was yeah doing by by hand, you know, because it's very rough. It's very rough. If if you look right here, mm -hmm. it's not clean. You know, it's not clean, but work well in uh because i i was thinking in in the in the shot you know of the camera of the render for the chains i do a uh, like uh let's i just do one One part mm -hmm. and yes okay let's go here because the thing is make a brush you mm -hmm. know I just make this a nice controlled control duplicate very cool yeah yeah nice. it's, it's a very, very easy way. it's very easy yeah i feel like this then, is, that's a trick that a lot of pe some people know and some people uh are just learning about this trick but it's yeah. a really fast and effective way to get some good super shapes. useful and duplicating is perfect nice this like this okay. 
And yes. Sorry, I'm very messy. And I scroll. I'm like a traditional guy, so. Nice. Just a, uh, you know, a cube mm -hmm. right here and right here. Then I merge all, press down and then uh, I separate this. Great auto groups. This is one group. Mm -hmm. This is another. And this is another. And then just I convert this into a brush. And then I go to the stroke and turn off the curve and that's all it's very very easy it's nice. very very easy well that, yeah that, that um, is very effective and for the from this kind of no coins or medals. I just do it by hand, make a, a cylinder. Mm -hmm. Like this. Make a polymesh 3D. Then I go to subdivide. Let's restart the rushes. Okay, not to divide. Let's dynamic. And you know, I make forms. Nice. Yep. Like uh, in a very in a very traditional way, you know. And yeah. then they do like the from like very very sketchy you know yep yeah so you're, you're just you're just exploring at this point trying to find your forms and oh nice uh pe people are wondering actually if uh at the end of this before you sent it over to uh substance did you re did you uh retopo any parts of it or did you just send it straight over I, I I use because uh, sorry for this, but I hate the technical part. <laughs> no, 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 you're so, fine. <laughs> so I I just because man, Seabrush is awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, really, it's like I use I use the Suri um, mesh. Mm -hmm. I I. First, I use the Dynamesh, and then I duplicate the Dynamesh. Use the Siri Mesh. Use then I use the projection, the project, and then I from the because there I have, you know, a low poly mm -hmm. because I I go the with the head. I have the low poly. Yeah. Just doing the three measure, you know. Perfect. And then yeah. I use the UV master and use the unwrap. Per yeah. That's that's all. That's all. Nice. Sometimes uh, when I using UDIMs, I go to Maya and and move the UVs. Mm -hmm. But that's all. 
that's all. I okay. use only ZBrush for yeah. this. No, that works. Yeah, it's it, especially since the character itself was never going to be animated. There's yeah. no need to go all in on super technical work when yeah. you're really your goal was just to get an illustration at the end of it. So, yeah, yeah. for for uh, personal projects, it's very mm -hmm. very useful. You don't need actually that kind of thing. Of course, if you want to to show the technical part you you need to to do all the top and the u the uvs but in this case for a render i i don't so i only use three measure and uv master that's all perfect and works very well yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely all right so uh when you were when you were doing texturing and painting did you did you decide to texture and paint this in parts and then piece it together? Uh, you know, or was this like you textured everything all at once? No, I I'm go I'm go more like in parts, but it's very relative because if it's something with the, for example, if I'm doing a bust of a dragon. Mm -hmm. I I texture all you know at the same time because it's like the same very similar the texture mm -hmm. you know in the head or you know but in this case I I go in parts yeah I always start in the head yeah no that makes sense breaking it up is helpful too because it doesn't bog things down and you can really focus in on one aspect so no, that's cool yeah well that yeah <laughs> it's just amazing a lot of people are just blown away by like how how detailed and clean and just wonderful this piece it's, is it's actually not such clean it's very because i using a lot this clay will dab you know for example right here yeah and um, i just like scoop like this and scar like this and mm -hmm. then you have like a little texture right here you know and then maybe this kind of of things tell me or oh, oh, you know Tell me how you you will texture it mm -hmm. later. Because I'm very spontaneous as culture. I really don't have a, like a previous concept or previous design. I have a, a very general idea in my head that is like the character uh, show to you in while I'm while I'm sculpt, uh, uh, sculpting, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know if that understand. Sorry if my English. No, no, you're fine. Uh, like, you know, yeah, basically. no, that's the thing. Actually, it's it's interesting because uh, something I've I've done in my early days of sculpting was actually not smoothing stuff and using the natural brush, uh, you know, deformations and imperfections to actually create more depth to the piece. You know, I, I feel like sometimes we just want to smooth it all away, but you're using no. all yeah. of those strokes and that layering is bringing more depth and characters characteristics to the piece so it's helpful sometimes to come in there so yeah, yeah. the process may not be super clean but the result is really powerful and yeah. it's helpful for example right here you know this kind of texture bony texture you know i just do the clay build up like this mm -hmm. very rough Then I go more, like, like more far and look. Okay, I think 
works and then go to dump standard and then you know define yeah. this kind of but i not i'm not a uh, smooth this you know yeah you use you use those the the brushes natural impressions to yeah bring it back to life yeah and that's a great way to that's a great way to find even more depth and details yeah 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 because i i seen a lot in very beginning very beginners uh, sculptures that got crazy do a lot of details and then smooth and then detail and smooth and uh, for me it doesn't work like that you know yeah I, okay I, I like lesson. to explore the the brushes yeah well like I mean a that's... painter you know uh, explore yeah. the the brush in the canvas yeah. you need to in see brush that's the magic I think I, yeah, I agree. ZBrush was built specifically like to get those ideas out as fast as possible with that, with the artist in mind of, I can create anything, you know, that there's no limitations. Let me just get in there and make and build something and starting from a sphere and then coming out with, you know, with this, <laughs> this type of character and the shapes and the expression, it just, it just goes to show just, you know, how much freedom an artist can have as they're diving in and trying to find their ideas and, bring them to life yeah 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 wow that's really cool now the gold too so for these right here like you have gold uh, materials did you put these this type of feel on it just so that you knew when you were moving to texturing that that's how it was going to look or did you use some of this when you brought that that texture when no, you moved it over I, to texture for this i i I start, you know, sculpt, and then when I have the the like the first shapes, mm -hmm. the primary shapes, I I I go to the the um, gold material right here, yeah. and then I continue to sculpture because that from like metals like gold silver you know uh, mm -hmm. i think that's helped me a lot in seabrush that is i i know that is very basic material here but helped me a lot to get a uh, a very rough idea yeah that yeah 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 so i i use i use a uh, gold material in and cure mm -hmm. and then i go to substance and go more detail yeah now it's good to have that placeholder mentality i do that a lot too you know if if you know something's going to be something and you can set up a nice spot for you to yeah. mentally come back to it you're like i know this is gold let me just make this gold you know yeah. and that's where the mat caps are really powerful because you're not worried about lighting you're just worried about the feel of it. And those matte caps have lighting baked in. So it's easy to just plop them on there and say, okay, I know that's gold. I'll come back. <laughs> I'll come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the idea because if I, I'm sure that this will be gold, I go to the to the gold material here. And that's mm -hmm. very useful. Yeah, because if you see in this from uh, the sculpture i don't i was don't know maybe uh, what material is in the stuff or you know in the in this kind of bad shoulders and mm -hmm. i just keep in gray but here i uh, i was sure that uh, it would be in, in gold so yeah nice Nice. Uh, so we have another question that came in. Um, when did you decide to move away from traditional and get into digital sculpting? Was there like an influence that you had or was it kind of yeah. like, hey, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, that's very uh, cool history because 
um, I think like a few years uh, ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys, of course, you you know who is Dan Catcher, right? Mm -hmm. The fathers yeah. of dragons, Dan Catcher, the person who made the dragons in in Game of Thrones, yeah. the father of dragons. Okay, so the, he was in a like in a tour in Latin America a few years ago, and I meet him in person. Now. Wow. Uh, yeah, and, and that time I, I was just traditional sculpture, but I play around sometime with Sirash, but uh, I doesn't. Uh, I was because I really don't. In that time, I was don't know that all the the big industry, you know, and um, I is for me it was just like a, a program, you know. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I meet Dan Catcher, and he look my traditional sculptures, and he looked that I. I was doing a, a like a dragon bust in that time, just doing clay wheel tap and dynamish, because I wasn't know any 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 brush or thing about uh, sweep brush. Only the this the clay wheel tap and dynamish and move. Yeah. And he told me, okay, you have uh, a great talent. You have uh, a lot of potential. So give me your number and I I will in touch with you. So from, wow. from there, I is, he's like, was my, my like a tutor, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, uh, he helped helped me a lot in my in my very first steps but and he told me okay he told me okay you need to learn to rush yeah you have to move from traditional to uh, to digital wow. because you you have talent and you can do a great stuff in the industry so yeah uh, it's because of of he that I uh, making this, and he's very proud now. Yeah, no, that's that's a powerful. I mean, yeah, <laughs> what a way, what a way to start and get into it, and that's and that's what's really cool too because you know tr the the blend between traditional and digital, you know, while it, it might seem you know, a little lost on some, the thing is, is that, you know, all those techniques and those, that those years you spent building that you could bring that over and just figure out where and how to, to place that. So it's not like you had to relearn how to sculpt. You just had to learn a program and then let that yeah. come out. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Because, uh, if you know the, the basic of F sculpture, doesn't matter if you start in digital or tradition, you know, you can move from uh, the, the one part to another. You, mm -hmm. you can, you can, if you start in, in digital, you can do traditional, you know, yeah. because you already have this basic in your head, in your eyes, your hand. So yeah. That's very was very 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 helpful in in the moment that I was start with the sea rush. In the mm -hmm. in 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 the beginning, I it's like a little frustrated because I have no control of the pencil, of the camera, and the buttons. Is like I'm not a, a program a software person. I'm mm -hmm. very low, I'm very slow person with the software. So yeah, that's, that is why I doesn't use like 
C modeler, I am very, you know, sophisticated techniques in ZBrush. Mm -hmm. I just use Dynamesh, a couple of brushes, and that's all. And that's then it. subdivide it, to remeasure, you know, UV master. Nice. And and how long were you uh, sculpting traditional again before you moved to digital? I start in 2000, I think 17, 2017. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's super I, awesome. I, yeah. And then because I was very, for me, it was very, I was very uh, like a purist guy, a purist mm -hmm. guy, because I just start, I start all full in Simbrush when the pandemic start, you know, for uh, for more like uh, because I need, I was I was needed a start in digital to work because mm -hmm. I can go to, uh, you know, uh, a place to sculpt yeah. for the pandemic. So it was more like for uh, a must to do thing. Gotcha. And then, and then I, I, my, my mind blow, you know, mm -hmm. when I see all the industry, all the things that I I could may, you know, because uh, in the in that moment I was very ignorant person. That's okay. We're all like that at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got that, stories. We'll tell you yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so was this your first contest, or do, are you somebody who dives into contests more often? I okay. Uh, let me think. No, I was in the in the last in the like the past year, like 20, 2020, Yeah, twenty twenty Mercedes contest. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I think I mess up the tags in the in the shots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I I wasn't make it that time. I in the uh, Art Heroes contest in 2022 for my oh, monster nice. contest, I think in Halloween. Very but, cool. Yeah, this is the first time that I I won some place. Nice. <laughs> This well, is well, my third. This is my third contest. You know, that's yeah. saying you know the the third is the the real one. Well, that's okay because you just keep at it, and it and you know that that's experience too. Something that I try to to emphasize is, you know, don't be afraid to to jump out and try a contest, even no. even if you don't think you know you have what it takes. You you might be surprised just. You know, and it, those experiences really do make you um, make you a better artist because it, it allows you to a connect with other artists, but b it also allows you to see what other people are putting out there that maybe you wouldn't have seen because you know you, you just there's just so much talent out there, but it's like it's all of our own personal journey too. So it's it's good to share. And yeah, yeah, you know, it's very 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 helpful because in in the other uh, contest you. If you doesn't, you know, don't want or, mm -hmm. uh, the the contest, you see the the winner, you know, the winners, yeah. and then compare from in in a good way, you know, in a very good way. Uh, what things doesn't work in my composition? Uh, there is maybe the lights. The composition, the texture, mm -hmm. the you know the sculpture, and yeah. helps you a lot to understand and and grow 
and as an artist you know yeah it's very i i tell a lot to, to people that go to contest you just know? do it <laughs> yeah let's just just do it yeah no fear it's not you know it's not your your life is not depend of yeah that it's just a, a proof it's a challenge of yourself yeah yeah and in in you know i would say the only real question when you when anybody enters a contest just ask yourself did you do your best and you know if you did be happy with that you know and you can always improve like i said you can look at the people if you're not the winner you can look at those who did win and you could say like oh wow that's okay I, I understand now what they did, or I can see at least what they did, and I can strive for that. And then if you're the winner, just keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, keep pushing because uh, you never know. Yeah, yeah. What's what's one skill um, that's like your most fundamental skill, the one skill you rely on the most that you would tell someone else? Okay. I think because creativity is too too vast, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I of course for me it's like the design, right? But in the design, I think the most important uh, is observe. observe. Because if you can observe the things of the world of the reality, you can replicate and not replicate uh, you can create because anyone can create from the, from nothing you know mm -hmm. you have to to know like a, a spectrum of the stuff you can have the spectrum of animals of you know, creatures of demons, uh, persons, you know, yeah. and I, for me, I think, yeah, observe, observe is the main key for me. Yeah. Because I, I have a, a, a saying, if you, if you, I can observe, mm -hmm. you can, can do it. Yeah. That that's really powerful. I didn't think you were gonna go there, and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, I agree with that. That's gonna be my new one. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to steal that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... No, that's great. Yeah. And that's the thing. You have so many little things here that really require that skill. You know, you've made jewelry. You've made cloaks. You've made you know tons of different faces. You have you know, staff, you have filigree, which is detail on top. And then on top of that, you're telling a story and then you have horns and bone structure. There's so much in this that like at any point in time, you know what I mean? Like if you just made a ring, if I made a ring and I was happy with that, I'd be like a ring. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I can, I can tell more about it, but yeah, I yeah. mean, doing some jewelry things. Yeah. 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 Well, um, uh, before you get into that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what what did you struggle with the most during this piece? Like, what gave you the biggest hmm. struggle? The biggest. Uh, I need to remember. Hmm. I think because I think the most. Okay, I I tell you what. What is the the key? No, the observe, but. For me, the most difficult part in a project is the moment that different parts, you know, come together and doing a very, I, I say like this, round uh, project. You have mm -hmm. the concept, you have the sculpture, you have the the story, the the telling a story, the, the storytelling, sorry, yeah. uh, and have all together in the same project when everything, you know, 
works equally, that is the most difficult part. Because, yeah. uh, okay, you have, maybe you can have the, the telling, the telling story, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have the, the sculpture or maybe you have the detail, but you don't have the shapes and the story and you only have a cool character, but that's all, you know, I think that moment when the project is round, I say it like this round is because all the points like uh, uh, like I it all comes together. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's the word. Yeah, yeah. The phrase. Yeah, and for me, it's like the, that's the most difficult part. For example, in in this case, is because okay, I know that is polemic, but I I was saying okay, I was I really want to uh, put like a uh, children face in this mm -hmm. sculpture. But where I put the face uh, to, you know, because I I would really want that I have the focus in there, mm -hmm. but I have already this very grotesque uh, character, like almost like a demon uh, with a love of texture, and where I put the faces to round the this this piece mm -hmm. i was really struggled in in that part but my my fiance rescued me yeah and tell me okay put here you mm -hmm. know just one but then uh then i have the uh, but uh, in, in that moment uh, the face is was in a very different, you know, uh, form. And then I have the idea to bring all these kind of faces, like almost uh, hiding in the mm -hmm. character, you know, with a very calm and peaceful expressions. And yeah. for me, like, that thing is the bring me the this kind of round project, you know. Yeah. And that's the, the part where was I I struggled more. Gotcha, nice. And and also too, um, because you were talking about struggling and trying to get stuff, we had a question uh about how long does it take to learn sculpting as a beginner but i kind of want to clear i also kind of want to add a little something to this too because i think it's it's important um which is more of like what would be your advice for a beginner sculptor um whether it be yeah. traditional or, or digital you know it could take take years as we all know but at the same yeah. time it's like what what's your advice for the beginner sculptor like for the first advice is you don't need to ask these kind of questions to yourself you know because you don't need to compare from other artists. You only need to compare with yourself, you know, and that's this one part. And from, uh, from the advices, I think you need to, to be sensible. You need to be sensible uh, in, in a part that not in an emotional way. Mm -hmm. I I think it's more like in a curious way. Yeah. You know, you have to be curious. You have to observe and you have to because okay, the passion, the inspiration part is very romantic, you know, it's very like maybe you you have inspiration in one moment but then you you haven't mm -hmm. you, you know you have to for that you have to to be a very disciplined person yeah i think 
So yeah, you have to be curious, you have to observe, discipline, um, don't rush, don't rush. That's is very, very important because in the first moment, because it's very special moment when you, you, you create, mm -hmm. if you rush that part, you can create, uh, you can grow as an artist. Yeah. And I see that a lot in a, a lot of, of uh, artists because maybe they can do a, a very good, you know, character and then finish and move from another, you know, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you like keep in this project, like doesn't matter one month, two months more, maybe you can discover something that make you a better artist, you know. Yeah. But yeah, don't rush. Uh, keep calm. Uh, yeah. Being curious, patient, discipline. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, this. Um, so you. Uh, I think I. <laughs> I want to apologize. They, I think I had stopped you from showing something. Did you? There was there something you wanted to show before we got into that question. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, what? I, uh... Oh, yeah. I, um, I think I was just wondering: uh, is there any like really cool feature uh, or part of this? Like, what's your favorite part that you want to show everyone on this piece? I think. Well, it's very for me. It's very obvious. It's the the head. Oh yeah, we were uh, talking about jewelry. Thank you, uh, chat. Ah, sorry. What? Oh, we were talking about jewelry. But ah. it's okay. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I can, and you know, show the jewelry because it's from a company. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting uh, doing some rings that that will be like a very, 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 very cool pieces. Nice. Like in this kind of style mm -hmm. that's gonna be really of, cool yeah. <laughs> yeah when when they you know the moments come yeah i will i will post so keep in touch in my instagram my my social media yeah blow up zebra central with it you're gonna have okay, a lot of people yeah. watching it <laughs> yeah 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 and yeah. that's what like my first time in in jewelry but uh uh that's because it was a very very <laughs> difficult process but yeah yeah i made i made it i mm -hmm. made it yeah what uh what sort of environment or world would you see this character living in do you think about that when you're creating yeah 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 for me, it's like very natural uh, to imagine my characters because it's like it's spontaneous, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the character in my head, and always they have, oh, uh, they like have this background or or some or some, you know, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. From this is like, well, the theme was underworld, you know, mm -hmm. so, well, for this, I, I was thinking in a, like, course church, like yeah. in a hell church, um, a lot of red fire, very old, you know, wood, metal, like a cathedral, very mm -hmm. old. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I definitely. I look at this creature and I'm like, this is definitely below the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the hands in the background, the the the, the hands are the furthest out. 
are they the same hand? Did you just sculpt one hand and then? Yeah. Repose? Yeah. I just do one hand, you know, make mm -hmm. the, in Dynamesh, make the mirror and world. Nice. And yeah, mm -hmm. and then I like do the serial measure because it's more easy to, to post uh, yeah. with, with the low poly, you know, mm -hmm. you know make some change. And yeah, that's that's all. And from these hands, uh, yeah, the same. I do one hand and then pose one, and then the other. Nice. Very intuitive uh, process. And the hands is actually not. I just you know scarf make some details here. It's not mm -hmm. too much. Uh, it's detail, detailing, but it's not uh, too much, you know? Yeah. No. Big, old, creepy hand. And, did, and, and what 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 uh, brushes did you use for the hand wrinkles? Did you like damn standard and... Damn standard. Yeah. From this damn standard, not slash three, because slash three is carved too deep. Gotcha, yeah. Damp standard make like uh, this kind of uh, I am a scarf with create a, a cave, mm -hmm. but not not cutting. You know, it's not cut. Yeah, the mesh is like uh, a cave. You know? Yeah, gives it a nice valley. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I make more organic look in in here in the in the flesh nice. that's done done dumb standard okay will that move uh and just ah for example that tip that i i seen from who oh, i don't remember the artist i think was from chris costa i see to uh, go to thumb standard, okay. Then uh, here in stroke. Uh, I think yeah, that's fine. Dots in alpha go this. Mm -hmm. I make like okay. No, it's not dots. This spray. I think. Yeah, that's it. Let's oh, wow. do like, because here is not detailing at all. Okay, so I have done standard spray in this alpha, okay? Mm -hmm. And then go to intensity, low a little. And then I go like this. <laughs> in circles and just like that skin texture yes. yeah <laughs> wow that is i think that is the simplest skin texture brush i've ever seen built yeah and uh, maybe if you can you you want to to write more um uh, bring more direction mm -hmm. you just do like this you know yeah <laughs> We got a comment that says, "Wow, I'm not even gonna make alphas anymore." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. It's Why? Very yeah, simple. it's right here. There you go. Damn <laughs> standard spray, and then that uh, lightning-looking alpha, and yeah. boom, you're done. <laughs> yeah, you know, like this. If you can exaggerate more. Yeah, and any and any place that deforms, you get you can get nice big wrinkles in there, and then any place that is subtle. Yeah, uh, that's a really powerful tool. Yeah, yeah. There, you, there you guys go. Chris Costa credits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is an awesome shout out and a great brush, and you you can tell too, just like everywhere that you you used it, it just yeah, it just really gives that nice extra detail to the piece. You know, and, and even though when you zoom out, they're super subtle, like it, it's yeah. very effective. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the idea, you know. 
Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I doing this from like in the here to you know. Of course, I exaggerate a lot more in the face. Of because course, I have to to explore the displacement map to, yep. to Arnold. Yeah, sometimes I need to exaggerate the details. No, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it's important. Yes, yeah. <laughs> damp standard spray, and boom. Yeah, there you go. Now, now, and, would you say so? You you won the contest with this piece. But I'm curious, are, are you satisfied with the, the final result? Or are you like, mm, I want to touch one more thing. I want to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's always. Because uh, one time, uh, one teacher told me, the projects never end. Mm -hmm. You have to abound, uh, abound it. Abound it? That's great. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so what would you say your process for, um, you know, if you want to alter or add detail to something that's already been detailed, but you, you don't want to destroy what you've already worked? Do you have a process or an approach that you go to? Like, let's say you did all this detail work and you're like, I need to add veins to his arm to make it a little bit grosser. Is there a way you work to preserve it or do you just get in there, dig it, and then just yeah. like, oh, I'll fix just, it. Just add it, you know, go to inflat, uh, mm -hmm. go to intensity, mm -hmm. and then maybe stroke lazy mouse. There you go, yeah, nice. Okay, this is not strong enough. So go more. Okay, so that doesn't work. This, so I reset the brushes. No, nice. Yeah. Um, you know. Just using the inflate brush, nice. Yes, inflate brush. And that's gonna that's gonna keep if there's details on top. That's gonna yeah. it's gonna yeah, it will inflate those details. So you want to be careful, of course, but that's gonna yeah. keep the detail there. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. you could also use a standard brush too uh, for anybody who's watching. Um, but I'll also do the same uh, has the same effect, just slightly different. The inflate's cool because. And I, I like that approach because blood is flowing through veins. So some parts are bigger, some parts are smaller. You don't have to worry. So that, that's so cool. Sometimes I'm using this elastic, you know, mm -hmm. for that because the elastic doesn't, you know, um, inflate this scarf. It's like under the detail. Yeah. No, maybe here. If I go this, yeah, it doesn't have the same effect that this, you know. Yeah, it's different, and that and that's good too for getting different results because yeah, asymmetrical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, would you say? I think I think we kind of know the answer to this one, but I'm curious on your thoughts. Would you say it's good to seek for perfection in a piece? Or do you not worry about perfection? It's like something that you're looking for and you struggle to to go there, but knowing that you never, you know, be there. It's like a, a, for me, for me, I, yes, I, I sometimes I'm looking for perfection, but in the in the process is the oh, how how I say this 
Yeah, because it's, it's something you never, maybe for me, I, I will never go there, in the, the perfection, you know? Yeah. But I always keep pushing and trying to go there. But that is the important part, the the process, you know. Yeah. Not process first. The, yeah, the process, not the the goal. Yeah. I feel like I feel like perfection is is kind of the double edged sword where we want <laughs> yeah. to hit it because we want to always be our best, but there's always gonna be something. <laughs> It's lingering. And that's that's the cool part because when you struggle to go to perfection, you learn, you grow, and you see maybe something that you don't see before, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is never ending process. Yeah. But if you are aware of that, it's good, you know. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, I, I'm looking for perfection, but I, I will never go there. Yeah. yeah some, something I had to tell myself early on when I started my career was don't, you're not, no, people aren't going to like, not everybody's going to like everything you do, right? There are some people who are going to love it and some people are going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, and just take a step aside. And like we had said earlier too, the process and doing your best yeah it's it's important to focus on just just always doing your best forget striving for perfection <laughs> yeah 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 don't, don't stress on it <laughs> yeah sometimes that haunted me the, yeah this perfection idea but i aware that that is not the goal is the process you know yeah would is there something you do to like help center your mind when you're working in that process you know do you have any like do you take a step away? Do you like read a book? You know, mm. I'm not a book person. I'm more like visual. Uh, I yeah, I, I put a, a music for me. Like my my music, my music is like my my wit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify. Uh, yeah, it's, I I'm just. I don't listen any music with, uh, you know, with um, with words. I mm -hmm. listen uh, soundtracks, all soundtracks of movies, series, you know. Um, the most uh, music uh, or soundtracks that I listen is like epic soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Like if they uh, like put me in, in 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 the mood, you know, to to yeah. challenge myself, because I when I when I go to to the canvas, I'm I'm seeing like me in a ring with mm -hmm. my me the past uh, me, you know. Yeah, no, that's awesome. The yesterday me, for example, and I'm trying to to surprise myself. That is my my rule in a project. It's not good enough for me if that it doesn't surprise myself. That's really cool. That's a that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So, um, music is is something I love too. I, I I cannot. I don't think I can go a day without listening to music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's, it's addictive. You know, it's for me. It's like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's my. Uh, it's I can't work without music. Yeah. I'm like low in my. I turn off, you know. And sometimes when I very calm, mm -hmm. I maybe I I listen a podcast, you know. Yeah. Dif different kind of podcast, art podcast. Podcast, uh, podcast, uh, maybe some scientific po podcast, or you know, or anything, or really silly podcasts, <laughs> just to you know distract myself. And when I burn out, I move for another project, 
or oh, you, you know looking at a series a series or movie mm -hmm. or, or go to the gym that's yeah. helped me a lot yeah allowing yourself to be inspired at the same time creatively which is nice yeah um, in, in terms in terms of, of exposure, you know, especially putting yourself out with something like this that's just <laughs> super powerful, you know, uh, what are your best results um, other than like art station? Like if you you know when you're when you're putting your art out there, do you have other places that you try to get recognized, or is it just like a you know art station, CB Central? Yeah. Uh... Seabrush Central, Art Station, Instagram, yeah, Facebook. But I'm that's I think that is my 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 weak point, you know, the social mm -hmm. media because I'm not a person who maybe post a lot or or is in the social media. That's yeah. I think is my my weakness. Yes, but but it's very important. But it's a tricky part, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a tricky part. But for me, I think if you have a very strong portfolio, but you doesn't have, uh, you know, the maybe a lot of of followers, mm -hmm. I think doesn't matter a lot if you put maybe in another station for example i don't have uh many followers but i have good job offers because it's not the quantity it's more quality for mm -hmm. the followers you know it's more important that the right persons sees your work you know yeah. than anybody you know Full of you, yeah. But yeah, I think what yeah. art station, Instagram, Facebook. That's yep. more art station and Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Facebook is kind of, you know, yeah. Not, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But the, the cool, the cool part is like in in Facebook are uh, many you know groups mm -hmm. or of artists. That's yeah. You know, sometimes it's cool, you know, but yeah. that's all. Instagram and that station. That's more important. All my uh, job offers, well, the the most, you know, uh, more times I think is from art station. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and something to note too, you know, um, while social media has a ton of artists who maybe are popular, you know, I. I worked with a lot of artists who don't even have social media. Their portfolio speaks for themselves and they just old fashioned phone book it up emails with studios and say, yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I would love to work with you, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's, it's maybe not necessary, but if you do want to get your name out there, then yeah, I mean, you know, definitely have the social medias and stuff. Yes. But not necessary if you're trying to become a working artist like you said good portfolio that's that's really solid advice yeah yeah because yeah that, that, that's a tricky part you know the social media because sometimes uh make is not very healthy for your you know psychologic part mm. to to like being very like some people is frustrated from mm -hmm. social media but if you have i think it's very simple you need a strong portfolio put out there and doesn't think you know about the followers of of that mm -hmm. kind of thing it's okay it's important maybe yes but it's not the the most important thing yeah you start know? with the zebra central community <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like yeah tons that, of people that's i think that's a very very good example because you you put the, your your work there yeah and if it's good enough you can 
appear in the screen of old persons, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the ZBrush community is one of the best. Like, I've, I've never met a community that helps each other grow yeah. as individuals and as artists. And it's it's amazing to to see it, to be a part of it and to experience it and to be able to talk to artists like yourself who share your experience and share your journeys. Because as artists, we all have different walks of life. And so, you know, it's, it's neat to be able to connect that and that's going to make each other better over time, especially with that connection. So start there, ZBrush Central. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, we, we are uh, almost at an end. We have a couple more minutes. Um, is there any other questions in the chat? Um, is there anything you would like to uh, share about this image or breakdown before we start wrapping it up? One last yeah, thought. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, you know, if uh, somebody wants to, you know, ask me something in my personal social media, I'm always, you know, on the service from help person person so yeah you you can always contact me and just ask me questions i always do awesome awesome well it's been a pleasure to have you here and thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to chat with me and to share your work with the community um Oh, real quick, one more question. Yeah. <laughs> Last question here. Is there any project that you're working on now that you are really excited about, if you can share? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can share. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I can share, but yeah, yeah. I think I'm, well, I'm leading, uh, I, now I'm I, I'm a lead character artist in a, in a game. It's very new. Uh, and okay. I think is that will be like very, very new in the designs and the I well yeah it's it's like have like like a surrealistic look mm -hmm. you know nice uh, but I can I can share but if you go to Moonray game that's uh, a clue nice good yeah. i like that <laughs> <laughs> and then i i for personal stuff i'm with my friends here i'm yeah I, I, we are like uh, starting a an a new game it's very it's very you know like chill process very low it's mm -hmm. like when we are free, we are like, but it's um, like Peru. It's, I, I know that it sounds like cliche, but it's like Peruvian Elder Ring, like something okay. like that. Nice. Yeah. It, you, you said it was Moon Knight or Moon Right? Moon Ray. Moon Ray. Okay. Moon nice. Ray game. It's Moon a very, very, you know, uh, first steps, but I think that will be like a bomb when nice. we will finish. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up, everybody. Thank you all for being here. We super appreciate it. And well, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to have you, as always. And <laughs> yeah, thanks to you guys. And thanks for, you know, to listen to me and your patience for my English too. I will improve and I will be here from any time you want from Sirius oh. anytime. Heck yeah. No, this was awesome. And your English was awesome on point. <laughs> no, so don't worry. <laughs> don't even worry. So, all right, guys, everybody, thank you again so much. And uh, also to do not forget that, uh, let me pull it up real quick, fast and in a hurry. Boop, add a stream. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, June 7th, we have an industry spotlight with Marla Nunes coming up, Realistic Portraits. So if you want to check that out. And then Wednesday, we are doing Making Tabletop Games. We're going to be making this little well here for 
tabletop miniatures and even uh, prepping for print. So definitely check that out as well. And yeah, that's a, that's going to pretty much cover it. So again, thank you guys so much and everybody have a fantastic evening and day. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.